Hey guys, the first two episodes of Fiona and Cake have finally dropped, and today I'll be summarizing, analyzing, and theorizing about them. Let's start with the first episode, which focuses on Fiona. In Fiona's dream, she and Cake imagine themselves as adventurers. However, when Fiona wakes up, she's not motivated to go to her job, and Cake is acting strangely, refusing to eat for three days. Concerned about her companion, Fiona decides to make an appointment with a veterinarian and takes Cake along with her to work. Fiona's job is a bus instructor for tourists. As she carries out her duties, she starts asking the tourists if they ever dream about being adventurers. One person mentions dreaming about being a hot dog is Hot Dog Princess. Another dreams of being a banana, which is Banana Woman, and a girl, which is Ferna, prefers not to talk about it. Suddenly, Cake becomes enraged after seeing some ice, and then the manager appears. It turns out the manager had been undercover as a tourist due to receiving multiple reports of Fiona not performing her job correctly, resulting in Fiona getting fired. Later, Fiona encounters Gary, or the human version of Prince Gumble, who gives her some snacks and a coffee for her journey to the veterinarian's appointment. On her way, she runs into Marshall Lee, the human version of Marceline's gender-swapped counterpart. Fiona asks Marshall to request that his mom, who is Hansen Abadir in the Fiona and Cake version, wait until the next month to pay the rent. However, Marshall is currently upset with his mother and refuses to help. Instead, he tells Fiona about his friend Alex, who can cure her cat in exchange for the snacks Gary gave her. Fiona continues her journey and encounters a woman who encourages her to make a wish with a dandelion. Fiona wishes for a better world and carries on to meet Alex, who is the human version of Lump Space Prince. Alex, however, pretends to be knowledgeable but does nothing to help Cake. As Cake spots something in the distance, she starts running and jumps into an ice cream stand, disappearing. The episode ends on this mysterious note. Let's go now to the analysis from the introduction. We see Fiona running in different job uniforms, mentioning that she has worked five jobs this year, including being a mailwoman, maid, cashier, chef, and finally, a bus instructor. Another notable aspect is the portrayal of Lemon Grab as a Karen-like character, which fits perfectly with his personality. Additionally, the manager is revealed to be the female human version of King of Wu, while many references and details can be found throughout the episode. I won't delve into them all since they are likely noticeable and other YouTubers will cover them. However, I came across an interesting theory on Reddit suggesting that Betty's fusion with Garb may have cracked reality, causing people to dream about their alternate selves, including Fiona. On the other hand, I believe that Prismo might be responsible for granting Fiona these dreams to enable her entry into the original adventure time universe. That's it for the first episode. Now, let's move on to episode two. We start with a strange intro that I'll analyze later, followed by a flashback of Simon and Marceline being chased by oozers. However, Simon wakes up and goes through his morning routine, trying to act happy, but feeling overwhelmingly sad. Some visitors arrive, including the red-haired girl, who bombard Simon with questions and invade his personal space, causing him to become increasingly stressed and have a mental breakdown in the bathroom. Simon decides to go to the bar and encounters Finn and TV. Seeing Simon in such a depressed state, Finn suggests they go on an adventure together to cheer him up. They venture into the heart of the forest, a place that Huntress Wizard has warned Finn numerous times to never enter. Ever, ever, ever come here. They set up camp, and Finn instructs Simon to catch some fish in the nearby creek. However, a giant fish emerges and attacks Simon. Finn leaps from a tree, stabbing the fish to save Simon. They proceed to eat the fish, but Simon's sadness resurfaces. Finn pretends they are running out of sticks so that Simon goes to find some, but there he encounters a giant bear that attacks him. Finn intervenes and kills the bear, but Simon gets injured in the hand, causing blood to spill so Finn kills the bear. After Finn easily kills the bear, Simon pretends to have enjoyed the adventure and heads back to his city. Finn, on the other hand, leaves to visit Huntress Wizard. Simon walks with a sad but amazing song playing in the background. He tries to call Marceline, but she's too happy, and he doesn't want to ruin her happiness, so he refrains from telling her anything. Simon arrives at his house, and reveals a cage containing an evil Chew's goose. He takes a gold figurine and a picture of Betty, attempting to use them to bring Betty back. Unfortunately, his attempt fails. Suddenly, a portal appears in Simon's head, and Cake emerges from it. The episode concludes with a scene in Prismo's room, which is filled with chocolate bars. Now for the analysis. Firstly, I must say that if I went through even half of the things Simon experiences, I'd be depressed too. Secondly, it seems to depict Finn and Simon both coping with loss in their own ways. Finn distracts himself with adventures to avoid facing his loss, presumably referring to Jake, while Simon clings to Betty, desperately seeking a solution but unable to let go. Thirdly, it appears that Finn and Huntress Wizard may be in a relationship as he frequently visits her. Fourthly, the theory is that the evil choose Goose is the result of drinking some of Kokon Tepi's blood. Lastly, the intro is quite bizarre, showing shots of Fiona's city as normal, 
then suddenly shifting to an apocalyptic and destroy version with Simon lying on the ground, and that shows the danger Fiona and Cake are facing, and the gold figurine breaking after Simon fails to bring Betty back after Simon fails to bring Betty back, I think that means something happened to Gore. Wait right there. We just started. In the mesmerizing Oozer's flashback, an intriguing detail emerges. The little purple entity, previously seen in Dr. Princess and Betty, is also present within Simon. This connection fuels the ongoing theory that Dr. Princess might indeed be Betty. Furthermore, during Simon's fleeting attempt to bring back Betty, flashes of Golb's structures appear, only to be followed by the sudden manifestation of Golb's face. The mysteries deepen. Delving into Simon's house, a collection of pictures featuring the Ice Kingdom catches our attention. These glimpses into the past raise questions about the significance of these images and their connection to Simon's journey. Additionally, Simon's self-authored book titled Ancient Artifacts captivates our curiosity. The cover reveals enigmatic artifacts, including the ice crown, alongside other unknown objects. One artifact, reminiscent of the Soul Stone, sparks speculation about its potential relevance and hidden powers. As the episode progresses, we encounter a fascinating revelation. In the final scene, Prismo's remote suddenly exhibits a pulsating purple button, possibly serving as an alert indicating the presence of someone or something out of its designated universe. This enigmatic detail leaves us with countless possibilities and an itch for answers. But the intrigue doesn't end there. A striking parallel emerges between the experiences of Fiona and Simon. Both awaken from slumber and find themselves briefly watching a snippet of cheers. Shortly after, Fiona encounters a statue of Betty, mirroring Simon's realization of a miniature statue of the same character. Moreover, Fiona encounters three banana guards during her journey, a mirrored occurrence in Simon's adventure with strikingly similar circumstances. The two girls who appear before Fiona are echoed by the appearance of insects in Simon's path. These uncanny parallels raise an intriguing question. Could it be that the world of Fiona and Cake exists solely within Simon's mind? There is a theory that could explain everything, that the Fiona and Cake's world is inside of Simon's head. Once he lost his magic, so did the Fiona and Cake universe. His head scratching also apparently matched up to portals, opening throughout the first episode. Additionally, the recurring presence of banana guards in both universes serves as further evidence. As for predictions for episode 3, it seems that major events will unfold potentially involving Fiona entering the picture and receiving assistance from the red-haired girl as they try to find cake. That could be the focus of the third episode. That's all for now. Please follow me on Twitter, join my Discord, and subscribe. Goodbye.